Grace, mercy, and peace be yours tonight from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to read the 98th Psalm so that we hear it spoken out loud. And then the focus of that Psalm tonight will be particularly in verse 3. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. So far the text this evening. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Amen. If we could list all the things that we have forgotten, can you imagine how long that list would be? I forget all sorts of things, and I'm sure you do. I forget dentist appointments. I forget dinners. I forget getting together with people sometimes for appointments. I forget the names of people. I forget sometimes even my own name. And so, like many of you, what do I do to remember? But I write things down. I have a planner that I write many things in, appointments and events and things, so that I'll remember them. And then, God willing, I'll remember to look in my planner so that I remember those things. It's quite a challenge, isn't it, to remember things. And the older I get, things like simple words even evade me. We wonder sometimes maybe how come we become so forgetful. You wonder if maybe your life is too busy or there's too much going into your brain and things are leaking out. It's hard to imagine. But the truth of it is we live in a sinful world, don't we? And the things that we would want to work just don't work like they should. And my brain is contrary sometimes to what I would like it to do. And so I forget. But as we look at God's Word, we see that our God is a God who does not forget. We might wonder at times if God forgets, but as we read the love and the promises of God that are put there for us, we see that God is a God who keeps His promises. We might look sometimes at examples in the Scriptures, we might imagine, for example, Noah, whom God told to build an ark. And after that ark was made and all the animals and Noah and his family went in, God shut the door of the ark against the rain and the flood. And then for days and for weeks and for months, God didn't say a thing. You can almost imagine Noah trying to be patient, saying, Lord, what's next? What am I supposed to do? And day after day, it's quiet. And maybe more times than Noah can count, he says to himself, be patient, be patient. God will tell me when it's time. But you kind of wonder in the back of your mind, or at least I do, in a situation like that, maybe, Lord, have you forgotten me? Let's not stop at Noah as he watches the mountains disappear under the waters. Let's look at Abraham. Abraham is visited in his camp by three angels. One of them is the Lord. He's told that he will have a child when the Lord returns in a year. And then he's told that the other two angels are going on into the, to the valley, into the plains, to judge the cities of the plains. 
And Noah, or not Noah, but, but Abraham's nephew Lot lives in the town of Sodom. Lord, if you find 40 righteous people, will you spare the cities for 40 righteous people? If I find 40 righteous people, I will spare the cities. And Abraham negotiates with God down to 10. 10 righteous people, Lord. If you find 10 righteous people, will you spare the city? If I find 10 righteous people, I will spare them. And some days later, Abraham looks out to the cities of the plain and there's smoke and there's fire. And God says nothing to him about whether Lot and his family has survived. Did God remember? I'm sure Abraham wondered. But think of another example. Perhaps the children of Israel in Egypt for 400 years. They had gone down there for grain during a famine and Joseph was the vice regent or the vice, vice president of Egypt. And they stayed and took important positions in the government and lived in the land of Goshen and then ultimately were pressed into slavery. And for many years they cried to the Lord, Lord, deliver us. But the Lord didn't answer. 400 years is a long time to wait. Lord, are you listening do you remember us here languishing, making these bricks and building these buildings? The people wonder if they will ever be delivered. And then, of course, there's Hannah, who comes to the tabernacle of God year in and year out to pray before the Lord's house, Lord, give me a son. Just one son. And Eli, the priest at the tabernacle, says, May the Lord grant you your prayer. But can Eli answer the prayer for her? No. Only God can answer the prayer. And Hannah begins to wonder, Has God forgotten me? Does God forget? We can ask ourselves. Sometimes it seems as though he might. Sometimes he's quiet. No matter how we may knock on his door, it doesn't seem that he's answering. But does he hear us? We may ask. It certainly may seem quiet. The silence sometimes seems extremely deafening. And yet, does he take notice of us? Yes, he does. God will not forget. God remembers. We write things down. God writes things down. I use my planner, but God used something much more grander. He uses the canvas of his word. And there he paints the pictures that he would have us see in his own inspired tongue. And there he tells us that he loves us. Not only does he love us, but he will never forget us. How can a mother forget the child nursing at her breast? How much more does God remember his children and feed them with his word? So much is his love for us that from the very beginning, when we put everything into a tailspin and crashed and burned, so to speak, in the Garden of Eden, God did not abandon us. But he was there with his word of hope and his word of promise. And he reminded us of that again and again as he put the rainbow in the sky above the ark when it had come to land on dry ground. And he reminded Abraham of his promise as he came back the following year and there was a son. And Lot and his family escaped the destruction in Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And as Moses arrived to the children of Israel in Egypt and said, Your covenant God, I am, has sent me. And from Egypt, God, with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, took his people across the sea to the mountain of God and delivered them as he had promised to do. God remembers his promises to you as well. Never will I leave you, he says. Never will I forsake you. And what has he done and told us about in that beautiful word of his? When we were lost and condemned and destined for damnation, God sent his one and only son clothed in our humanity that he should be circumcised under the law. That he should live the holy life that we could never live. Absolutely perfect. And then, when the time was right, he gave his life over to death. And we who were in death, he gave to life. Through the simple working in our hearts that he does by word and spirit, in which he creates repentance and faith and through the gift of faith that he has worked in you he calls you his own dear child his son he gives to death so that you and I might be adopted as his heirs and to prove that God has not forgotten us it wasn't enough that Christ should simply die on the cross but to prove his love for you and I, he raised Jesus from the dead. He raised him from the dead. And because he lives, he says, you and I will live also. In the psalm today, verse 3 says, he has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel, to the ends of the earth, all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Already at the time of the Psalms, it was a done deal. God's promise in God's presence was being fulfilled. No wonder the psalmist can say, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song and music. Because God keeps his promises to you and I. Those dark and desperate times in the middle of the night. I don't know why 3 a.m. seems so familiar. When we wake up with worries and concerns and it seems like we might be alone and the questions come to our mind Lord will you look down upon me will you help me in my distress will you answer my prayer and though we don't have an audible voice God in his word through his promises says to you yes I will and I am already doing it because I love you. Because I have forgiven you in my son. Because you are mine. He remembers his covenant with you. He's written it down. It's like it says in that familiar book, I meant what I said and I said what I meant. I am the God of salvation 100%. And so he is your God and my God, the compassionate Lord who hears the prayers of his lowliest people who turned to a dying thief who prayed, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus says to him, as he will to us, Truly I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. 
So have no fear, have no wonder, have no worry or distress, for He remembers you. He remembers you with a love that goes beyond all love. He remembers you. He will not forsake you. He will not leave you. Whatever the coming year may bring, whatever joys or sorrows may await us, God goes with us, hand in hand, to lead us on that narrow road, to carry us when we need to be carried, and to give us the joy and the hope and the confidence that we need as he enables us to trust in him. Don't be afraid because your God never forgets. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand for a blessing. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.